welcome to Center for General Studies and Communication Skills. And uh, I'm going to be taking us through introduction, of course, introduction to computer, JSS 201. My name is Usamu Oko, and I'm going to be lecturing on chapter three of the course introduction to computer, JSS 201. And then uh, what we're going to talk about today is computer software. Computer has already known uh, from the various chapters has two distinctive functions. We have the hardware and the software. The hardware has to do with every plant. has to do with the physical, the physical part of the computer that you can easily touch. While the software deals with the program and how the computer performs a task that you can appreciate. So the first thing we need to talk about are the various types of software that you have out there. The computer software is actually divided into two parts. The first is the application software, and the second is the system software. Most times we often say software software, but we don't know what each switch. So I'm going to be taking this session to explain to us what the application software is all about and what the system software is. It's all about. Then, second, the second or third, we are going to be looking at the levels of programming languages. At what level do you think you can interact with the system? And whatever you are doing, at what level do you think you are? Because the system that we all know, we don't understand the plain English that we speak or plain text that we will type on it. What the system really understands is one and zero. Those are the with the two addresses that he understands. So how do we translate or transcend from our world of writing and reading or whatever you have to ones and zeros? And I'm going to do all that. I'm going to just give us a brief intro on all that. And lastly, we'll now look at the forms of programs, different forms of programs that we have out there. So Quickly, let's look at what, what the application software is all about. Every now and then, we get people talking about a computer software, that like the university have a software, they put a software, or whatever, and all, all that you need to hear about software. But what do you really know the software? An application software is that a, a software that performs the actual task that it's meant for. Can be written in different languages. It can be in C, it can be Java, Python. There are various flavors of, um, of um, programming languages that are used to develop an application software. We need to be specific task. In the, in the gene in genealogy of computing, we actually have two forms of computers that was actually developed back then. We had ENIAC and Eurac. One was used for election in the United States of America. Why the order was used for, I think, even or something, but ENIAC and Vera, there were two applications that, that actually met, that actually met what they were, they, they, they were built to do for the system. Sorry, I'm a bit distracted by uh, some people trying to do something, so just put that out. So like I was saying, application software are applications or software that is meant to solve a peculiar problem. Let me take for example, you will have weather issues around and you need you need to develop a software that can maybe tell you the exact weather condition by placing actuators and sensors everywhere, which we now refer to as different internet of things. The software has to relate to those hardware and do that issue. That's even going on the high side. Maybe take for example, you just want to you just want to do something that that you need a system to help you out there. Maybe you are trying to compute something like opening up a spreadsheet and calculating for allowances of lecturers or anything you want the system to do for you. As long as the programmer sits down to come up with a code that when you run the system, it does exactly what you want to do. We refer to that program as an application software. Are you with me? And it can be written in Java based on the level at which you want the system or the programmer to go with. If you want to go 
down to the system core system itself can use programs like C++ that, that, that relates easily with hardware. Or if you, are, if you, if you want to do programs that are uh, write programs that viewers can easily appreciate, cutting edge programs, you can go for likes of Python. So there are different programs that you use in perform in, in writing, uh, in, in coming up with what they call the application software. But the application software doesn't really work on its own. It uses what I call the system software. All this uh, the system software will actually relate with the hardware. The application software is just more of a user interface thing. But when it comes to the hard, the, 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 the devices connected to the system, we will now need what I call the system software. And that takes us to the second flavor of, uh, of uh, application, or sorry, of the computer software. But before we go to that second table, let's look at the types of application software that you have that you know out there. The first is the tailor-made um, or customized software, where you can call a programmer to write you an application that will do what your organization or what you intend to do, use the system to do. Let me take, for example, you want to do an election. I need a programmer to write an, to write, uh, an application for you. That will help you do the election and do the sorting or collecting at the various filling filling units. You can get a, a, a program that is designed or write a tailor a tailor made or a customized software for you to handle that particular task. But there's another type of application software you have out there. You also have what you call the customized customized off the shelf. Sorry for my customized off the shelf software. Now, these software are generic software that like, like Microsoft Word, Excel, that you can just go out to and buy the application, run it on your system, and do whatever you want to do, like your, uh, like your spreadsheet and like Word. All these are PowerPoints. They are all customized, uh, uh, sorry, uh, application packages that you can actually get out there and run on your system. And it works for you. And it works for you. So these are the two flavors of application software, the custom, the customized and the generic type. Now, but these two applications, or rather these two software as we call it, do not really work on their own. Like I said earlier, on. They, they need services of the system software so that they can be able to work with the per peripheral units or system, system units around the particular system or hardware, if you want to want to relate to that time, that the system will need to work with. So now let's look at what the what the merits and the merits of both of them are as for the comment commercial of the shelf application and for the customized application. We are going to look at those merits, but because we want the slaves to go to the material, they are listed in the material and they may even come as an evaluation question during your exams. So let's quickly go to what what referred to as a system software. Like I said before now, they are the ones that actually help the computer, they help people use the computer efficiently and they contribute to the control and performance of the computer itself. They act as an instruction provided in application pro uh, programs. Now, take for example, you want the, the system to scan a barcode and you have a scanner without you getting the driver of that scanner the, the scanner will not work that driver that you need to get the scanner to work is what we refer to as a system software and there are various there are different types of flavors of system software the first one you have out there is the operating system. I know most of us must have heard of them operating system. In fact, people call themselves operating system nowadays as nicknames or whatever. But what does what is the operating system? How do you use operating system? What's it all about? We are going to be looking at it in the course of this program, but it's all listed in the material. Like I said before, now the operating system is what brings everything together. It's like the mother of the home, it's what brings the various hardware. So they are relating to the hardware one on one. The application software only uses the, the operating system to perform what it ought to perform. Take, for example, you have Microsoft Word to, to use. 
You cannot just install it on your system and expect Microsoft to, to run. You need to install an operating system on that on that system itself before you can now install the application, which is Microsoft Word. Are you, I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. You may, you may have been seeing it every now and then, but you really don't understand the difference. So I'm trying my best to separate them for you to really understand. Now, the second flavor of system software that I have out there are the utility programs. These are programs that helps the system to store, edit, and files and or collate or organize or manage the system at, on, on its own. So there's another one that we need to also take note of, which is the translators. Like I said earlier on, the system does not understand our words to say or whatever we type on it. Though we humans, we think we have typed the program, we have done all, all the, we have crossed all the T's and dotted all the I's, think the system understands it. But the truth about it is that the system really do not understand, do not understand. Sorry, someone is trying to ask a question. Okay. Sorry, let me just go through. Thank you. Okay, like I was explaining before now, the system do not really understand all this. What the system really understands is ones and zeros. That is what the system understands. So we need we need something to translate uh, high-level languages to low-level languages of one and zeros that the system will, will work with. So that's where the trans that way the translators come in, into play. So when you read your material, you will see a lot of the trans uh, types of translators that you have out there. Then um, the third thing that we talk about are the levels of programming language. So I'm talking about uh, the, what the system understands and what the humans understand. It is actually low level programming languages and high level um, level programming languages. I hope you can see. Um, yeah, high level programming languages. As you can see in the book diagrams, in this particular diagram, you are seeing something like a code of um, maybe that the program programmer may, may have written. But the truth about it, like system really does not understand this code. So to just think that you finish writing your code and you think that system should work, sorry, it truly really will not work like that. It doesn't really work that way. What happens is that this code is translated to ones and zeros. Now, in most of our programs, we always have class, class definitions. We find a class and what we call the class and we create a, we write our various codes. We have the syntax for base of the program or the program, the programming language that you are using. We have various syntax for various uh, code, lines of code. But you, uh, but there are some things that you need to understand that those calls that you make, like, like uh, classes that you call, they are actually linked to our code. And how is it linked to our code? What, what the translator does, or rather, what they are, I tend to call translators or programs to call translators that will convert this code to one and zeros. I will now have what I call a linker that will link all these codes together. Then the system will now have a huge amount of ones and zeros that it performs and it falls in line with the code that was written. That gives us the high level language, which is what we use writing the code. The, what I was explaining before now, when I said ones and zeros, are the low-level languages, which you can refer to as the assembly code or the other machine codes. But the high-level languages are the ones that you are, you, are, you are familiar with, Java, C++. These codes are user-friendly, if you want to use that for example. Or you can easily read them and understand what the program is all about. But when you pick a machine code, or uh, a, uh, yeah, it's an object programmer. You really don't understand the ones and zeros which is going to be where and the other. But the system understands perfectly what to do when it sees that uh, ones and zeros. So how do they all? How does it all uh, make sense? Is what we are, I'm trying to make us understand. Sorry about the fonts. Uh, I think it's a bit mixed up when I was trying to make some correction. But forms of code, the first thing you take note of is source code. 
which is the normal code that the programmer will write for the folder you write yourself. If you don't see that, sometimes it's good. So that's an example of the source code that you have out there. But like I said earlier on, this system or the computer doesn't really understand what the source code is all about. What happens is that this source code, as you can see in this box, are now translated into object files, or you call them machine code, we not human codes that the system now understands. And these codes now are now linked with the runtime library using the linker to come up with what they call an executable program. Thank you very much for doing this lecture or doing this class. And I hope that I'm able to make you understand what the difference is because I started off by telling us that we that the computer software itself has two types. We have the application uh, software and that system software. The application software I told you before now also has two types. We have the tailored, the tailor made or customized programs, and we have the generic or commercial option programs. And I now also went ahead to tell us about the system uh, software, where I told us that there are three types. We have the operating system, we have the transcriptors, all the stuff in your material. Go through the materials, see everything that we have talked about, and, uh, and you will understand better using the video to, to compare with what I've said and what is the material. So thank you very much for attending.